This is rental car number 117, and today I'm driving the 2019 Ford Fusion Hybrid SE. This is a mid-size sedan that retails for about $27,000. It's actually the second ever hybrid that I have rented. I got a chance to drive the Ford Fusion Hybrid 2017 model, but I haven't had a hybrid since, so I'm pretty excited to take this one out for a spin. Let's talk specs for a second. I'm going to give you a mouthful. Under the hood, we have a 2-liter IVCT Atkinson Cycle i4 hybrid engine with an eCVT transmission. This thing kicks out 188 horsepower and, as expected, gets pretty good gas mileage. 43 miles per gallon in the city, 41 on the highway, but as a hybrid owner, I uh, drive a Prius C, you're probably going to get way better gas mileage than 41 miles per gallon on the, on the highway. Driving my little Prius, I typically get 60 to 70, and I bet you get something similar with this one. But when you do need to fill up, you have a 14-gallon tank. Gas by me right now is uh, fluctuating, but it's about $2.15 a gallon. That means every time you fill this thing up, expect to pay about $30. All right, so enough about specs. Let's uh, quickly talk about drivability. First thing I want to mention is about handling. Uh, this car is solid. I felt extremely comfortable driving this car, even though I had some icy road conditions. Going around corners is effortless. You don't feel like you're pulling at all, and honestly, you feel like you can give it, at least I feel, a lot more gas while you're going through these corners because the car just hugs the road in a really nice way. The lack of cabin noise is also really impressive. When that hybrid engine is engaged, the car is essentially silent, but even when the gas-powered engine kicks in, the car is really quiet. I mean, I was able to drive this one at 70 miles an hour down the interstate with some pretty windy conditions, and uh, I couldn't tell. I was able to keep my podcasts and my audiobooks on a very low volume, and I was still able to hear it uh, really easily, so I was really impressed. Last thing I want to talk about is acceleration. This is okay. Um, I punched it pretty hard, and uh, you don't get tremendous acceleration with this because the hybrid engine is really taking control for a majority of the acceleration time that I'm showing you right here. So I was able to get up to you know 70 miles an hour pretty quickly, but this is by no means a fast vehicle. And you need to keep that in mind if you're thinking of renting or driving this one. Because if you want something you know, really fun, something with a little bit of power, you might want to look elsewhere. Here's the key fob, four buttons on the front, lock, unlock is the button in the middle, a trunk release and a panic button. You also get Ford's logo on the back. This is a pretty heavy key fob compared to a, a lot of the sedans I've been driving lately and a little bit larger than normal too. Uh, you don't get a physical key to start the key, to start the key, to start the car up. You just press the button right here on the dash. You'll notice there was no sound. So because it's a hybrid engine, you don't get that large, sort of rumble right when you start the car up. It's completely quiet and a little bit strange. I actually turned this car on and off a couple of times thinking that I hadn't turned the car on for some reason. Here is the steering wheel setup. You get a number of buttons on here. Uh, the controls up here on top control the displays in the gauge cluster and there are two of them. One on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. You also get buttons right here to control your cruise controls. Buttons down here to control both the volume and your phone, along with switching the track on the entertainment features up there in the big touch screen. And then as I mentioned, the controls right here adjust the screen in the display. A gauge cluster is awfully beautiful in my opinion. You get a speedometer in the, sa in the center and then screens on the left and right side. There are plenty of things to cycle through. Let me give you just a quick taste. Over here, you have laned um, departure detection. You see this little icon on the far left side with a car and the dashed lines. When the car senses the road, and it's pretty good about doing that if the lines are clearly drawn, uh, it'll flash and the whole seat and steering wheel will kind of buzz at you if you're tipping out of your lane just slightly. Uh, I have this on the uh, Empower screen but there's a lot of other screens on here. Speedometer is probably my favorite, but you get different trip counters, tire pressure, a bunch of other things about the vehicle. Same thing on the right-hand side, a lot of different screens to show you both what's being played on the entertainment features of the vehicle, but also additional information about the vehicle, which is, I think, nice to have, especially when you have such a nice display with all the information available to you on both the left and the right side. Down below, we have our 
window controls, controls to adjust the side view mirrors. Up top we have our door latch and our door lock buttons. I kind of like the door lock buttons. Not only are they small, but when you lock the car, you also get an, a red LED light that's on all the doors showing you that the car is locked. And then if we unlock it, you'll see that the red LED goes dark. Windows are kind of dirty right now, so let me open it up and show you the rear view mirror. It's a little bit loud with the highway next door, but I wanted to show you that you do get blindside detection on this vehicle. This icon right here has a small light to the right of it, and it will illuminate in yellow if someone is in your blind spot. And the car will also uh, flash that light and beep at you if there's someone in your blind spot and you attempt to change lanes by turning on your turn signal. And you do get that blindside detection also on the passenger side mirror. Shifting your focus up top, we have a sunglass holder, two lights to illuminate the cabin, and some pretty simple controls to control everything. You also get a standard uh, rear view mirror with no buttons of it on any kind. Below there, you have a nice sized touchscreen. Your hazard button is right here up top. Touchscreen is large and, and I think pretty beautiful. I love Ford's displays, they always do a nice job. Yeah. Uh, there are dedicated buttons on the bottom of the screen to sort of shift through all the different features. But you have climate controls, so you can control pretty much everything that's important. Temperature right here, the direction of the vents is right here, the intensity of the fan, and then your dual climate controls right next to that. You have a separate menu structure for your phone. The nav screen has its own dedicated menu button, and then you also have an app screen where you can find all the additional apps that are loaded on this vehicle. Setting screen is not that exciting, but I do want to mention that I was able to connect my uh, phone via Bluetooth within probably about 15 seconds, which is uh, not bad. Down below there, we do have some controls, a volume uh, knob and a tuner right here. Those are uh, wrapped in kind of a soft leather. Leather. I wish. It's actually wrapped in a soft rubber on top. Uh, that makes it a little easy to grip. And then you have dedicated buttons right here to adjust some of the uh, music settings on the vehicle. Down below there are your climate controls. Uh, you do have climate controls in the touch screen, but there are dedicated buttons down here as well to adjust the fan, the temperature, the direction of the vents, and your defroster settings, along with a nice power button right in the center to turn it on and off. The vehicle uh, has the climate controls off, now I turned them on, and back off again. Down below there you have a large cutout. Um, there's plenty of space back here, let me kind of give you an idea by putting my cell phone back there. You also have two USB ports and then also a power port right here as well. Small cutout in front of there. Let's see, I haven't done this but I bet it's perfect to sort of prop up your cell phone. Uh, that works really nice. Gear shift is behind there, it's just a dial. So when the car is on, which uh, it's not making any noise, but it's on right now, uh, you can cycle through the gears just by turning the knob really briefly. So park, reverse, neutral, drive, and then you have an L in the center. You also have an electronic parking brake. Pull it up to engage the brake, push it down to release the brake. Behind there you have buttons to shift on and off um, your eco mode, additional buttons uh, to control some of the other drive features. You also have two cup holders right here, and then an armrest in the center, it's wrapped in a nice uh, nice leather, and it's got this two, I don't want to say two, but there's, there's two ways of opening this up. It's hard to see, but there are actually two buttons right here that you can pull up on. So you pull up on the first one, and it reveals the large storage space underneath. If you were to hit the second button, you'll see that there's a shelf that is now on top of the storage space, with a small section in front and a larger section in back. And this is really nice. If you have smaller items, you can put it here, and then you can still have access to the large storage area below. And then shifting your focus over to the passenger side, you do get a glove box. Pretty nice size, and I love to see that Ford has installed a shelf in here. This is just wonderful because you can store things like your registration and your owner's manual right here, and then down below you still have space for some other odds and ends. All right, so I jumped in the back seat. I have this seat, the driver's seat, pushed back a pretty good ways. Not all the way, but pretty close to all the way. And I still have a lot of legroom back here, probably four or five inches between my knees and the back of that seat. 
The seat also has a pocket on it. These are becoming more and more common in the sedans I'm driving. It's just kind of a cloth fabric type feel and it opens up a little bit so you should be able to get maybe a couple of magazines or something back here. And there's a similar pocket on the back of the passenger seat as well. On the back of the center armrest for the front seat passengers you do have two dedicated vents and then down below towards the floor you get a dedicated power port down here, although you will need an adapter to use that one. Not a whole lot of other amenities back here. You do get window controls and a door latch. Looks like uh, this car is brand new, so you get to peel off the plastic. On the back of the seat, you do get a foldable center armrest with two small cup holders in it. And then the last thing I always like to look at are car seat anchors. Fords aren't usually that great. They tend to bury these pretty far back and it's the same on this car. If you look, you have to manipulate the seat quite a bit in order to get access to that car seat anchor. I can't actually show it to you because it's so far back there. So if you are going to be installing a car seat back here, it's probably gonna be a pretty big pain in the butt to do so. All right, so let's close things out by taking a look at the trunk on this vehicle. You'll notice right away that there's a shelf back here, and this is because this is the location of the batteries for the hybrid engine. And it actually takes up quite a bit of room back here. Um, I was able to get the uh, cases that I usually haul around for my job uh, pretty easily back here. It took a little manipulating. But I have a feeling that if you have some larger suitcases that you're going to run into trouble getting them in the trunk space. Thankfully though, the floor of this area does lift up to reveal a little bit of additional storage room, but just know that you only get a spare tire kit with this car. You do not get a spare tire, and uh, frankly that's a little bit disappointing. What is not disappointing is that the rear seats do fold down just by pulling very gently on these little tabs right here, and then the seats fold down without any effort at all. It gives you a little bit more space to haul some larger items, but just be aware that that opening between the trunk and the actual cabin of the vehicle is pretty small because again that shelf is kind of getting in the way. Alright so that's pretty much everything end to end on the 2019 Ford Fusion Hybrid. I have to say I enjoyed this one quite a bit. I am shocked at how quiet this car is. In hybrid mode it's completely silent but even when the engine kicks on this is a very very quiet sedan. It's also got some really nice screens both in the gauge cluster and in the center display so kind of hits all the things that I like about sedans like this. So I would gladly drive this one again. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you join me next time when I rent and review my 118th rental car. I'll see you then.